Next up on the Cosmic News Network, First Contact with Joshua Putt. doing today welcome back to first contact radio thank you for being here yet again today is the 8th of september 2016 our sun sign is in virgo represented in the tarot by the hermit holding the lantern high in the physical world to shine the light of information the light of truth upon the people so people can see out of the darkness see through the darkness and then we have the Moon sign, which is Sagittarius, the higher self, the angel representing the higher self, telling us that we need to be balanced. One foot in the physical world, but one foot in the spiritual realms as well. We need to temper our activities. It's a fire sign, which is telling us that there's a lot of fire, a lot of energy around. So we need to temper the way in which we are expressing ourselves and the way in which we're pulling all of this together. And the best way to do that? connect with the higher self so that we are coming from a place of deeper understanding about what's going on. Now, some of the aspects we're looking at over the course of this day are at 5.06 p.m. We have Saturn is in a conjunction with Sagittarius. So the conjunction is they're right next to each other in the same house. And in this regard, Saturn is the disciplinarian wants to teach the lesson of focus. So he wants us to focus that energy that we're using, focus our ability to be temperate, be more disciplined in our actions, the things that we're doing. 5.20 p.m., we have a square. Neptune tells us we need to take a new perspective on the way we're looking at things in the world. And then at 8.54 p.m., we have imagination, from Venus jumps into the mix with Sagittarius and they put a nice positive energy energetic together in which Venus wants to stimulate our imagination so we experience things that are taking place in this reality from a perspective that is using our creative sense using our imagination to create the world if we could create the world with our thoughts just imagine what we might create on the flip side what would we create because do we control our thoughts enough that we are making sure we're only creating the things we want that's a big question good question indeed our moon phase for today is 42 percent making its way upward towards the full moon which will occur on the 16th Jewish calendar today is the fifth day of the month of Elul, the last of the months on the Jewish calendar before we begin the new month. And that time will occur at, right now, well, let's see, the, next, the beginning of next month, actually, is when that occurs, the beginning of the month of October. Now, the daily thought for today is a child each day. The wise person begins each day with a small child. Every cell of his being is dedicated to learning wisdom. And so from every person he finds some wisdom to learn. Each day he rises to great heights of wisdom, and yet the next morning he begins all over again as a small child in wonder. Space weather, solar wind currently at 445.1 kilometers per second. Planetary K index, quiet at the moment at a 3, however, looking at a possibility of being unsettled at a 4 over the next 24 hours. Corona hole, still same place that they were the other day, up at the top, a little one opening up at the bottom here. M-class flare possibilities now up to 10%, X-class is at 1%, 
geomagnetic storm activity in the mid latitude seems to be subsiding from 10 down to 5 percent in the upper latitudes it is it's pretty stable stable subsiding slightly as we get down into you know the minor the minor area here 20 down to 15 percent so there you go that is the cosmic weather for today just plan accordingly we have an earth sign for our, our conscious mind the things that we are thinking about the things that we're doing or thinking about wanting to bring change into the world we bring change by shining the light high for others to see we have to let the light shine we're in the physical world the world is a heavy materialistic world that can be dark and that light helps to brighten it up the darkness comes from lack of information when we bring that light of information into it we now see things from a more truthful perspective and it's important then for our unconscious mind to be connecting with the higher self that helps us to disconnect to some degree from only being caught up in the physical to understanding there is a higher perspective and once we put those together that makes all the difference in the world ufo news is up next This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk. Thank you very much. Today, four stories. First story takes place over Los Angeles. This occurred just the other night. We have a series of lights appearing to fly through the skies. Check out this new footage of multiple unidentified flying objects or orbs flying across the night sky above Los Angeles and California. This was filmed on the 7th. There they are. Wow, nice. Wow, that's a lot of them. That is a whole lot. A whole lot. You know, I go out every night, I look at the stars and the skies, hoping I'm going to see something up there. And didn't see that last night, but thank goodness somebody saw it, was able to capture it. That was quite the sighting indeed. Looks like it's flying over downtown Los Angeles. All right. Next one we also have is in California as well. This is a bright orb changing colors. New footage of a bright orb changing colors. The video was recorded near a place called Marysville in California. The 7th of September. There's our object in question. All right. Moving on, scientists develop a cloaking device to hide Earth from hostile aliens. U.S. scientists have come up with a cloaking device to hide the Earth from noisy, nosy extraterrestrials. A timely discovery given last week's news that our closest star, Proxima Centauri, is orbited by Earth-like planet, one perhaps inhabited by intelligent beings. Earth is the most vulnerable to detection by other civilizations in the cosmos when it passes across the face of the sun, known as a transit. If the aliens had astonishingly powerful techniques, Earth would appear as a black dot against the shiny backdrop of the sun, which is how Venus appeared to Earthlings when it transmitted the sun in 2012. More likely, though, the aliens would detect a dimming and flickering in the sun's brightness, similar to that caused by a moth flitting close to a porch light. This is precisely how the Kepler mission has detected more than a thousand exoplanets over the last seven years. Columbia University astronomers David Kipling and Alex Tichy in a paper titled Cloaking Devices for Transmitting Transiting Planets suggest that the Earth could be protected from detection or conversely attract attention by the use of lasers during the hours of a transit event. They believe aliens may already be deploying lasers to these ends. In the paper published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, Professor Kipling writes, the transit method is precisely the most successful planet discovery and characterization tool at our disposal. Other advanced civilizations would surely be aware of this technique and appreciate that their home planet's existence and 
habitability is essentially broadcast to all the stars lying along their ecliptic plane. We suggest that advanced civilization could cloak their presence or deliberately broadcast it through the controlled laser emulsion emission. Such emission could distort the apparent shape of their transient light curves with relatively little energy. The New York-based authors offer both budget and high-end solutions, estimating that humanity could cloak the Earth from Kepler-like broadband surveys by firing a 30-megawatt monochromatic laser for about 10 hours a year. It would be aimed at the presumed enemy, in this instance the newly found planet Proxima b. It's worth noting that the 30-milliwatt laser is available on eBay for about $20. Now, what I find strange in this article here is they're saying they're going to aim it at the presumed enemy, which they're already saying is Proxima B. But how is Proxima B the presumed enemy when they don't even know what's going on up there? So they've already determined there's an enemy? I'm telling you they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on, and they're just causing more problems than anything else by their... Silly ways. Yeah, we're going to hide our planet. Mm -hmm. National UFO Reporting Center. This is a good site to check out because they maintain the latest reports. Click on that link here. We have reports of this month so far, eight that have been reported to this organization. We had the uh, fireball over at Greenfield, Wisconsin on the 2nd. On the 1st, we had a number of sightings over Brookfield, Wisconsin, uh, another fireball over Leighton, Dollar Bay. We had a formation of some sort, strange lights in the sky. Over Vail, bright white lights at low altitude moving extremely fast. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, odd light above Cedar Rapids, Iowa. In Innisfree, Canada, fireball. Traveling across the sky and finding, finally at Marshalltown, another uh, bright light above the city there. So this is a good site to check out because it does provide you with information about the latest sightings that are going on. There's a number of sites like, like this, so I periodically want to make sure you are aware of them. We have the National Reporting UFO Center. We've got the MUFON Center. So... Plenty of places to find out about extraterrestrial sources and extraterrestrial sightings. Now, one thing that's important to remember in all of this is these organizations get their information from people who are going out looking up at the sky. So if you want to have firsthand experience, just keep looking up at the sky because sooner or later you're going to see something. All right. All right. Stay tuned. I'll be back. Just a few moments. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. Continue on, because there's a lot to deal with. All right, the number 61. 61 represents the number of days from now until the election. It's also a number of days that I believe that the experiment of America has to live. 
or will die. Now that may sound kind of doomish, rather a dire thought. I've been saying this for a while. But if we don't get this right, America will not be the same. You see, we are going down the wrong path. We can see what's going on in America. It's getting worse and worse. The criminals are running the show. And as the criminals are being called out for the criminal behavior, they are covering their tracks and finding ways to close up that information that is showing them to be corrupt. If Hillary gets into office, the problems that have been going on with the Obama administration are going to continue. As a matter of fact, they are going to increase the situation with all of the refugees coming into America. She wants to increase by 550%. That's going to change America. We see what's happening in Europe. We understand how this influence of the Muslim extremists spreading their message throughout the world has happened in the past. It happened in 622 AD when Muhammad and his followers were first spreading Islam. So we have that situation that would continue to progress here in the United States and all the mosques that we heard of out and and all the infiltration of the radicals here in America would only increase, which means that the safety of this country is not going to be like it was. We're going to continue to have a pouring of illegals who don't love America coming from south of the border as well, which is going to continue to diversify America in ways that we're not going to like it. If Hillary gets into office, she is going to eviscerate the First Amendment. She's going to get rid of many of the alt-right conspiracy sites that she has talked about for so many years. So the source of information now is going to really be restricted to what goes on with the mainstream. She's going to see to it that the TPP is put in place, which is going to eliminate more American jobs. And I can go on, and I can go on. But, as you could see, we're in a dire situation, so we need to really pay attention. Therefore, we need to keep hammering at this. There's 61 days, 61 days left of this experiment called the United States of America. If we elect and we put Donald Trump in office, which is what would be the best thing for this country, then we have a fighting chance. But he's got a lot of stuff that he's going to have to really clear up because he's exposed a lot of corruption. And that corruption isn't going to want to leave so easily. So there's going to be challenges that are going to take place either way. We need to take this more serious, my friends. We don't want to be on the flip side there. We don't want to be sitting on, you know, looking back on November 9th, thinking we could have done more and, and you know, and dealing with the possibility that Hillary is elected or maybe cheats her way in. We don't want to be sitting there and realize that America is now no longer the same country it was. We want to be able to, and we don't want to be thinking, could we have done more? Because then it's too late. We need to do more now over this next 61 days. Now, last night was a, wasn't a debate, it was a town hall dealing with these two presidential candidates. And afterwards, there were the moderators talking about what happened. Matt Lauer was the moderator of this. And you can go and find online the full video of what occurred last night. But one of the things that did come out afterwards is this story about this earpiece that Hillary was wearing. Was Hillary wearing an earpiece last night during the presidential forum? Conservative actor James Woods, he says, well, she can't even lie without help. Okay, you can see something in her ear right there, a little earpiece. Was Hillary Clinton wearing an earpiece during last night's presidential forum? Well, that's the latest question swirling around the internet after pictures appeared to show Hillary with some kind of flesh-colored device embedded into her ear. Conservative actor James Wood drew attention to the issue from the simple question, earpiece, and a close-up image of Hillary from last night's forum. Woods also posted a Clinton email from WikiLeaks in which who Abedim asked Hillary, did you take your earpiece or do I need to get it? 
She literally can't help herself. She's kind of a sociopath who will lie, even if the truth would be more beneficial, added Woods, linking it to an article by True Pundit, which reported that Hillary was wearing an earpiece to receive stealth coaching during the NBC Live Town Hall event. New York Police Department sources involved with the NBC Forum security detail confirmed Clinton was wearing an inductive earpiece, the same technology employed by almost all lead Broadway actors to receive forgotten lines and stealth offstage cues from directors. The flesh-colored earbud is easily concealed. There are no wires running directly to the ear like you see with the units employed by the Secret Service protection detail. The report goes on to provide technical details of the earpiece, asserting that almost it is almost invisible to anyone and normally issued to law enforcement or corporate security teams. Okay, here is the WikiLeaks that was referred to by James Woods. And in here, look at the last line here. From Huma. This is from Huma Abedin. And she's asking Hillary. This is back in September of 2009. Did you take your earpiece or do I need to get it? Question is, how long has Hillary been wearing this? Is she being coached along the way? So she's just a puppet then for somebody else who's telling her what to do, how to act. Is her mind going that bad? She's doing this town hall, but we're not interviewing the person that is behind the stage, giving her the instructions. She's being interviewed. She's the candidate for office. But apparently she can't even do that without talking, without wearing some sort of device to help her cheat. Crooked Hillary is a very appropriate name for this woman. She's a cheater. Now, some of the times when she was getting up and she was talking, she's very harsh in the way that she communicates with people. And I really would love to see some of the people out there asking questions be a little bit more in her face about stuff. I think one of the questions somebody should ask is, Hillary, if you're elected president, will you continue to speak down to the people as if they're peasants? She may not like that question, probably won't. Who cares? We don't like the things that she's doing. We don't like the string of assassinations that are following along with her. We don't like all the lies and the corruption that she has told us. So we certainly shouldn't be afraid to ask her these tough questions. And these reporters, these journalists, need to get a bit tougher as well because they're throwing softballs at her. They're not asking the appropriate question. And again, I have to ask the members of the mainstream media, do you think that the lies you are telling the American people is protecting your families. I don't think so. Because one day, those lies that you're telling the people that don't exist, one day you're going to find that the very thing you lied about is knocking at your front door and is affecting your families. And then you're going to wish that you had told the truth. So before it gets to that point of no return, before you get to the point where you start to find that your families and those that you love are actually in jeopardy by the very lies that you told, start telling the truth. Because I don't believe that you're immune from the problems that are out there. You're just exasperating the problems. You're making them bigger by continuing to tell the lies. You know, you're showing yourself out to be corrupt. You're supposed to be journalists supposed to be journalists, investigative reporters asking tough questions. You know, to take a, take a line from the movie Mr. Deeds, I bet if the child version of yourself saw you right now, they would beat you up for the lies you're telling, for the way in which you're behaving. So you need to come correct, my friends, if you're in the media out there. You need to come correct and start being a bit more honest and a bit more direct. You act like you you have never done an interview before and you have time you're brain dead on the questions you're asked. So quit throwing the softballs. Ask some real questions. These are real serious issues that affect you and your families just as much as everybody else. And if you're lying to the American people, well, you're certainly not protecting your friends and your family. And if you're lying to the people, you're certainly not protecting my friends or family, or the friends and family of the American citizens who are relying upon you for good information. So again, come correct. You're tired of watching your lies and nonsense. Here's an important 
bit of information Hillary Clinton said last night. This was a new one. She was asked about her server, and she said she used a second server for classified email. ABC News Commander-in-Chief Forum on Wednesday night aboard the USS Intrepid in New York, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton invented a new alibi for her mishandling of classified information, telling host Matt Lauer that she used a secure server when she needed to send classified information. In July, FBI Director James Comey revealed that Clinton not only withheld the deleted work-related emails, but also sent classified emails, many marked as such, for her private, on her private non-secure email server. I communicated about classified material on a wholly separate system. I took it very seriously. When I traveled, I went into one of those little tents that I'm sure you've seen around the world because we didn't want there to be any potential for someone to have embedded a camera or try to see whatever it is I was that was designated, marked, and headed as classified. Okay, so now she's admitting that she had classified stuff. And it's another lie. Another lie that Hillary is telling. This wasn't the story she told before. Now she's telling a different story. Okay, they're just racking up the lies of Hillary Clinton. Keep racking up one after another. The woman does not know how to tell the truth just like her boss, her predecessor, Barack Obama. They don't know how to tell the truth. They just lie, lie, and lie again. Let's look at her health. Bill Clinton's comment about Hillary's health could end her chances of winning. It says, as the mainstream tells it, Hillary Clinton is the healthiest person in the entire United States of America. Despite reports from U.S. doctors claiming Hillary's health care is gravely concerning, the liberal media wants the public to believe that out of 300 million people, nobody is more qualified or healthier than she is. But Bill Clinton's comments on the truth regarding his wife Hillary's health may have just ended her chances of winning this year's presidential election in November. In fact, Bill's remarks are so potentially damaging that the mainstream media has gone completely silent on the matter. In his book, Unlikable, The Problem with Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton quoted, as saying that Hillary's health is actually in total opposition of what she claims. According to Bill, his wife's health is anything but superb. Instead, Bill said that Hillary was flat out in denial over life-threatening symptoms and was ignoring the health problems that, and not taking the matter seriously. Below is a screenshot of his jaw-dropping comments. He said maybe Hillary should rethink... Um, Okay, so Bill Clinton allegedly expressed concern for Hillary's deteriorating health and wanted to help her. According to reports, Hillary lashed out at Bill for speaking about it and blew up at him. Bill told me that he tiptoed into the dangerous territory, suggesting that maybe Hillary should rethink whether she had physical stamina to take on the torches of a presidential campaign, a close friend of Bill Clinton told Edward Klein. The book goes on to add a quote by the anonymous source close to the Clinton family who said Hillary erupted and cursed at Bill for bringing up her health problems. The unidentified Clinton friend quoted Hillary screaming to Bill that you were a effing quitter and a loser. You're projecting your own health problems. I'm not dying. Hillary then completely lost control of her temper, threatened to throw a hair bush brush she was shaking in her hand at Bill, the new book alleges. Sources say that despite Hillary refusing to listen to Bill's concern, the former president of the United States went ahead and asked a prominent cardiologist to review her medical records. According to alternative media outlets, the identif unidentified cardiologist recommended Hillary Clinton travel with a full-time physician so that she could be under direct and constant observation. All right, well, are we seeing signs of a physician traveling with Hillary? Yes, we are. It's the gentleman who's been following her around, that he is seen on the airplane last. He was seen walking with her, carrying the EpiPen. He's been at a number of these events. So yes, somebody is traveling with her that has been identified as a physician. There's some reality to this. Even Bill is admitting, seems to be concerned about his wife and what's going on with her. Now, last night... Uh, part of the talk was in dealing with the military. And Hillary made a comment that just kind of, well, it didn't go right 
She said that we did not lose a single American in Libya. Think about that for a minute. Hillary Clinton said we did not lose a single American in Libya. Guess what she forgot? Benghazi is in Libya. Hillary Clinton declared during NBC News Commander-in-Chief Forum that no lives were lost in Libya when she made the move to take out Director Muammar Gaddafi. Even so, the former Secretary of State did not mention the fact that 11 months later, four Americans, including U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens, were killed in a terrorist attack in Benghazi that arose from the instability that, over, that the overthrow created. You know, and with respect to Libya, again, there's no difference between my opponent and myself, Clinton stated, attempting to dismiss her hawkish foreign policy record. He's on a record extensively supporting intervention in Libya when Gaddafi was threatening to massacre his population. I put together a coalition that included NATO, included the Arab League, and were also able to save lives. We did not lose a single American in the action. Well, again, she failed to remember that Benghazi is in Libya. She also tries to make this comparison that Donald Trump had this to say about this war. He was for it. He was against it. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Donald Trump wasn't in office. Hillary Clinton was in office. Donald Trump, no matter what he would say, would only be listed as his thoughts or personal opinions about the matter. He was not in any political position where he would have influenced something that had gone on. It was Hillary Clinton and her position, her job. Now, one of the things brought up last night was the discussion of the military. Donald spoke about the military as really having problems. And people are offended by that, saying, how could he say this? Well, he says it because it's true. Because under the Obama administration, there have been a number of military personnel that have been removed from positions and replaced with others. The, the military has been decimated by this man who is simply out to do one thing, destroy America, destroy it from within. So I have a couple of videos for you I want you to watch because they will help you to understand a bit more of the problem. This one goes back to a CPAC meeting, a panel that took place in March of this year, 2016, March 3rd, retired Admiral Ace Lyons. It's a 21 minute, 23 second video in which he talks about the state of the U.S. military and what he talks about are the exact things Donald Trump is talking about. Our military has a problem, that how our country has been infiltrated. And he goes on to say that the biggest threat that America has is at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the president of the United States. He discusses this. He does not mince words on what he's saying. So, big problem. Here's another video for you to look at. This video here says, first time in U.S. history, seven generals got fired. Okay, so I'm not making this up. I'm not just making this up. Our military has been depleted by the President of the United States. Why would he do that? Because, again... I sound like a broken record. Again, Barack Hussein Obama is not a friend of the United States. He's an enemy to the United States. He's connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. He himself is the one who is allowing all of these things to go on because he himself is the terrorist that is leading the charge. He's leading the charge in a way that seems to be passive aggressive because he's allowing different situations to occur so that more and more of these radicals could pour into the country and our laws are allowing this he's so he's changing laws on the books he's changing policies he's just creating a whole lot of problems we in america don't realize that we're under this attack in 1991, you can go back to previous shows and you could read the documents. The Muslim Brotherhood plan to overtake America. 1991. The plan has been in effect for a long time. 
to take over America. How? By slowly getting into the system and embedding in all different aspects of the system. By going in and changing how we live by going and teaching the children while they're in school a different ideology because didn't think the parents would be paying attention, which is the case. So children started being taught different things in school, different ideologies. And then these kids came out of school and went to college. And then they taught other people about these same ideologies. Fast forward to today, look at the kids that are coming out of the schools, completely brainwashed, not thinking for themselves at all. We're like in an Orwellian nightmare. We have these millennials who for the most part are completely clueless about anything that is taking place. We have the anniversary of 9-11 coming up on Sunday, and there's many young people who don't even know what occurred on that day. It's been washed from their memory. They're not taught about these things. So this leaves it up to the older Americans who've been around a little bit, who still have two brain cells to rub together to be able to make a difference. Tomorrow on the show is going to be a show all about 9-11. I've been talking about that for a while, ever since it occurred. And uh, many people have, because what happened there was very significant and also plays a part in what's going on in the world these days. Here is a list, or tells 40 exhibits. This following list of all 40 exhibits that financial expert Charles Ortel plans to release one per day starting on the 6th of September. As he releases them, we'll add links to each exhibit. Ortel's conclusion from his independent audit, the Clinton Foundation has committed massive charity fraud. Ortel first enumerated his exhibits on page 7 of this document posted in May of this year. So... Week one, this started on Tuesday, fundraising activities in the name of the Clinton Foundation, Jan October 97 through January 2001. Yesterday, the seventh information, fundraising activities in the name of the Clinton Foundation for the William J. Clinton Peace Center in Inkskillen, Northern Ireland, starting after 1998. Today, the information that will come out is undisclosed administration proceedings against persons who exercise significant influence over Clinton Foundation activities. Tomorrow, it's going to move on into fundraising activities in the name of the Clinton Foundation for the William J. Scholars Program at the American University in Dubai, starting after 2000. And Saturday, undisclosed activities in the name of the American Indian Foundation allegedly providing earthquake relief in Gujarat, India, starting in January 2001. And you could see we got week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, all the way up to the 15th of October. It's a lot of information because there's a lot of corruption out there around this group, the Clinton family, their organization. Americans need to wake up. But we've got a problem because Americans don't know how to wake up. Americans have been conditioned, conditioned to do what they're told, conditioned not to think for themselves, conditioned to act without thinking. I mentioned a video yesterday. Today I brought the video link up. It's a lengthy video. Well, not that long, three minutes, 42 seconds. But I'm going to leave this for you to watch on your own. But this says experiment proves that most pe people are sheep. Okay, in this video, we have a lobby of a doctor's office, a waiting room. This woman walks into the waiting room. And as she walks in there, the room is filled. Let me see if I can get a screenshot here. Okay, you can see she walks in. The room is filled with all sorts of people there. And as they're in the room, sitting there, all of a sudden there's a beeping sound. And everybody stands up. And this girl, for no reason, stands up with them after she watches them do this a couple of times. And they all sit back down. And then every couple moments, again, the beeping goes off and they stand up and then they sit down. And so one by one, all the people get called into the office. 
until this woman is going to be sitting all by herself there. And yet she continues to stand up and sit down every time she hears this noise going off, this beep. Because she's been conditioned, doesn't know why. Now she's by herself and she's still doing the same old activity. Got the beep that's going to go off and oh, she stands up. Okay, she's there it is right there. So she's in, they got her. Now the experiment goes on to another step. New person enters the waiting room. New person enters, sits down, the beep goes off, she stands up. He looks at her, wonders what goes on, doesn't think anything of it. Beep goes off a second time, she stands up. This time he asks her, why are you standing up? Her response is, everybody else was doing it, so she started doing it too. So what does he do? Next time the beep goes off, he stands up as well. Why? Because that's what they think they're supposed to do. Okay, this is our problem. We have too many sheep living in America. Too many sheep that are following along doing things just because others are doing them. Just because others are doing them. They've been conditioned like Pavlov's dogs. Okay, a huge social experiment has been done on the American people, and the American people are clueless to how they are being controlled. I think you'll laugh if you watch this video, but after a while you'll find out that it's not really so funny because you realize this is how people are behaving in the world, which is really quite scary. Really quite scary, and so people are going along believing all the nonsense without thinking about it. Okay, you know, if you watch the video, I was watching a video the other day after Hillary had her coughing attacks at the rally. She spoke for or for four and a half minutes. She just kept coughing, coughing, coughing. Afterwards, they were talking to some of her supporters about this. They were absolutely clueless. Oh, Hillary's fine. Hillary just has allergies because that's what Hillary said. Um, Hillary is just you know, her throat was dry, and they made all kind of excuses. None of them were aware of what was going on because their minds have already been taken from them. People watch the news, and they think that they're actually getting information, saying, oh, I watch Fox News, and they're telling me the truth. No, I watch MSNBC. They're telling me the truth. Others say that they're watching CNN, and they're getting the truth there. You may get little bits and pieces of truth here and there that leak out. There may be some individuals at these different networks that are sharing truthful moments. But on a whole, you're not. You see, what we have here is three different news organizations. Each one of them like a sheepdog. And the sheepdog is responsible for rounding up the sheep. And you've got three different dogs here. And each dog looks a little different than the other dog. So people think, oh, well, they all look different. Each dog behaves a little differently than the others. And when these dogs, these sheep dogs, are rounding up people, they all have their particular way because the sheep dog of Fox News has to appeal to the people in a different way than the sheep dog of MSNBC or the sheep dog of CNN. But one thing about these sheepdog that is a certainty is that they're all three working together to round up the sheep and lead them into the same pen, to lead them to the same slaughterhouse. Okay, They're not leading them separate places. They're all leading them in the same direction. See, our media has been controlled since 1917. It's been over 100 years. I say this over and over to keep reminding you because on a daily basis people turn on the news and they think that they are getting something that is telling them the truth. It's a show that's been controlled for nearly a hundred years and that system of control has gotten so intricate that there are six corporations that are the main controlling sources of over 90% of the information that we receive on a daily basis. The one place which is still 
the Wild West, where information is being passed freely, is the Internet. And it's the place that they'd want to shut down because they can't control that. See, there's propaganda bills that are in place and laws that are allowing our government to use the media as they want, to tell whatever lies to the American people they want. So, this is about each and every individual. question is, are you going to continue being a sheep, or are you going to wake up and realize that you're just being led to the slaughter? And if you can realize that, we got a fighting chance. But, you know, we're, we're getting kind of close here, my friends getting kind of close we used to look back at the stories of the holocaust and we we think how could all of these people have been captured and led into a situation where they were all led to their deaths how could that happen and many times we've heard americans say that will never happen here in this country that will never happen on my watch and yet the very thing that they say would never happen is happening and good people have been brainwashed and controlled and having their minds taken away from them. Parents have had their have lost their children to a system that has indoctrinated them into another ideology. And people think it's normal. Yet we're all walking, following the group off the cliff. Meanwhile, the powers that be are laughing at us. You got Hillary Clinton telling one lie after another, after another, after another. We got the agencies which are supposed to be monitoring this, which are corrupt and paid off, so they're not being honest. The Justice Department is corrupted. The FBI is corrupted. We don't know who to believe and trust there anymore because they're just not doing their jobs. If the average American person went out and did some of the things that these people like Hillary is doing, they'd be in jail. As a matter of fact, that was one of the things brought up yesterday by a military, ex-military man. Said if he did these same things, he would be in jail. But then she clarified, oh, but she didn't do these things. Of course she did. She's a liar. She's been lying for a long time, and she's going to continue to lie, to do whatever she can to get in that office. And if she does, America will officially be dead. Okay. Obama has done all he can to put America on life support, and now America is at its last breath. We've got 60 days, 61 till the election. Better make these 61 days count. Better make them count because this could be the last time America is going to ever be the same unless we get this one right. And the only way to get it right is we need to put the person in office who is not controlled by all of these interests. In this particular race, that is Donald Trump. He may not be the be-all, end-all, but he is the person who wants to get in there and fix the problems that we have. He's the person that has called out all the corruption. And I believe that there is something more significant about him when I look at the prophecy Trump, Pence, Trumpets, Trumpets, Trumpets. Sounds a whole lot like trumpets. Trumpets from the book of Revelation, trumpets from the Bible. Trumpets are preceding some sort of announcement from God. And then we have other phrases like, we live in America, which is run by a president, Obama. So this is an Obama nation. Book of Revelation, or the, the Bible, many sources prophecy talks about the abomination we saw the cloud in the sky of of uh donald trump not sure how that got there but is it a significant thing that is showing us that this is important we had the anointing that took place in the church by the bishop last saturday the prayer shawl given to donald trump we have the media, which is conspiring against everything. I, the other day you re saw the piece, Rupert Murdoch gathering his team together to try to take Trump down. Corruption is being rooted out, my friends. And if we follow along like sheep 
and don't ask any further questions, then we're going to may never have the chance to ask these questions again. Because if Hillary gets in and gets her way, well, there's going to be a lot of things that are shut down and a lot of freedoms that Americans have which will be removed. And I could tell you, from everything I'm understanding, we're going to be moving closer and closer to Sharia law. And if we go that path, well, ladies, you might as well uh, kiss your freedoms goodbye because under Sharia law, women don't have freedoms. Women don't have freedoms. So it's a different world there, whole different than what's going on here. So in order to fix this, we need to, again, connect with the spiritual aspect of ourselves, that higher self. We can't just rely upon the physical because this is the world where everything's happening. We have to understand the higher connection. Now everybody and people, a lot of people are trying to figure this out, but people, even when they're doing this, hit plateaus. Seven reasons why your spiritual awakening has come to a sudden stop. It says no matter your level of conscious awareness, or the level of spiritual enlightenment that you have attained, there will come a time in your spiritual journey where you know and feel that you have made great internal progress and then suddenly nothing. Positivity has flown out the window. Prophetic visions and lucid dreams have been replaced with normal lower conscious ideals and mindfulness has been replaced with overactive thinking patterns. You simply can't make the connection that you once felt and it seems impossible to return to the level of light, love and higher awareness that you seek. Everything you attempt to get moving again seems to fall as if an invisible roadblock has been put in front of you, leaving you wondering just what is going on. It's a path that can't be avoided, but why does it happen? Spiritual roadblocks are designed for you to slow down, take a break. Your initial spiritual awakening may have been so full-blown that now your mind needs time to rearrange itself. A reformation of belief systems, perceptions of the world, and perceptions of yourself are in order here. These time periods can be extremely frustrating and sometimes even painful if the cycle is leading you into another dark night of the soul. Navigating this rocky terrain requires patience and gentleness with yourself in order to sail the rough waters safely ashore. Determining the root cause of this spiritual development, stalemates are crucial to getting you back on the road. So here's a list of some things, seven things. One, you need healing. Okay, everybody needs to take time to process what's going on. A lot of stuff is brought up when we're looking to increase and connect into that spiritual realm. We're angry. Anger comes up sometimes dealing with the issues that we experience. Anger for ourselves because we're looking at situations that we feel like we could have, when we finally realize what the problem is, we could have done something more to alleviate it. And we didn't, and so there's often that anger that occurs over that. We have to learn to let that go. An overdeveloped or overinflated sense of self. This is a big one here because, like anything else, there's spiritual pride. People oftentimes are on this path. They start to get some insight, and next thing you know, they're in a place of spiritual pride. Overinflated Ego doesn't get you anywhere. Frustrated with the current world status. That causes people to, you know, spend too much time focused on the physical and takes their focus off of the spiritual. Falling back on old patterns of behavior. Okay. So we have to endure. We have to continue to express some endurance in what we're doing. Not listening to our heart. Okay, we disconnect because we are distracted by all the things that are going on. And we still think we're unworthy. So, last line here says, if you're stuck on your spiritual journey, meet your anger with love. Follow your heart in all of your ways and remember that we are worthy. Okay, so these are seven good points. I'm going to leave this to you to read the article. Very good article, L.J. Veneer. Very good, important article because we're all on a spiritual journey. We are all spiritual beings in a physical body. 
we all have the ability to connect simply by the fact that there is a great creator that emanates the energy, that life force that fills and animates these bodies. The thing that keeps us from evolving or connecting is the lack of information that we receive. When we're taught to look outside of ourselves and we stop paying attention to what's going on inside, the distractions of this outer world can really cause us problems because we stop looking for spiritual solutions. We need to always look for the spiritual solutions because it will help us throughout this world. Yes, we're in a physical world, on a physical planet, but this planet, this world, this reality is all part of a reality that supersedes this one that is a spiritual hierarchy. And so we need to defer to the higher realms, the higher spiritual hierarchy, the higher self. Okay? We need to do that and we need to endure and keep ourselves moving along the path with humility, with an open heart, the ability to forgive. All these things are so important. Forgive ourselves, forgive others, and understand that we're all on a journey to really move through this world and understand how to work together. Not under a system of control like the governments talk about with the world order, but with a system of unity that is just inherent in all of us, knowing how we work together. When we work together, we're much better than when we work separately. You know, we're a huge team, but we forget about this. We've become so divided. It's time for us to unify and not be divided because the division that's going on is the thing that is tearing us apart. Divide and conquer. So the powers that be are dividing us in order to conquer us. Don't allow ourselves to get divided. Don't be divided from what's going on. And the first thing we keep ourselves from being divided from is from spirit because we can never be divided from spirit from God, that source that flows through all. Never, ever. Only the illusion that we can be. Only the illusion. And when we understand that, it makes all the difference in the world. All right, let's close our eyes and do our meditation for today. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another breath. And exhale again. And another breath. And exhale. And as you continue to breathe in and out, imagine where this breath comes from. It is part of this physical experience. But the source of this breath comes from some place deeper. And as we follow back the source of this breath and the source of life animating this breath, we find that it travels all the way back to this source of existence, this God source, the source that flows and emanates outward into all things, into all of life. And as we understand our connection to this source, this God source, we find that our lives become enriched and filled with deeper meaning because we understand that this source is the source of true abundance love, success, happiness. And we realize that all of the challenges and problems we faced in this physical reality are those that have occurred when we disconnected or stopped paying attention to the source that flows through us. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, thank you for the blessings of this day. 
Thank you for your spirit that flows freely through each and every one of us and for the opportunity that we have each and every day to connect and to understand even more fully the nature of your presence within our lives. We thank you for all of the lessons and opportunities that come our way this day and for the experiences of the past that have helped us to learn and grow both individually and collectively. And we pray that as we move forward through life that we continue to honor your divine essence that flows through us out into this world. So let's let the subconscious mind continue on the journey, a journey of observing our connection and then sharing that knowledge with others that they might observe the connections that their life has as well. So let the subconscious mind continue on that journey and let's bring the conscious mind Back to the present moment on the count of three. Three coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale and open your eyes that's it my friends that is the show today thank you for being here a lot of information in the world there's no reason any of us should be like a sheep no reason we should be following along blindly at what's taking place because we all have the abilities to be able to move through life with a whole new set of confidence simply by connecting into something bigger than who and what we're about something we're all connected to the higher self the higher aspect of ourselves the angelic connection we have so let us strive to connect with this higher power and just watch the changes that occur in our lives and then the changes that occur in this world as we are all bringing forth something bigger, something better than what this physical world tries to convince us otherwise. That's it for today. I will be back tomorrow. We're going to focus tomorrow on 9-11. So be, uh, be sure to check out that show. In the meantime, have yourselves an awesome day. Keep learning. Keep uh, keep understanding where we're at so that we can keep making progress until tomorrow i love you keep loving each other and i'll talk to you soon peace i'm out of here